to work as good as the last time, if not better. With that, we're going to start our meeting. I don't see any guests amongst us. Everybody is a member. We need to try to get people in. This is the chance for them to come. And I'm just shocked that they're not in. But I was like, if you think you can't get in because you can't travel to the place, you're worried about commuting, all that stuff. There's nothing else in the way. We Hopefully, we can get some more visitors. I'd love to get visitors to join us. We have to be a little bit careful about not getting visitors that might bomb our meeting and do something crazy, and then I have to basically kick them out. I do have the power to kick them out, but we prefer not to go through that experience if we don't have to. Therefore, there are some limitations. Maybe if you're going to advertise it, Avi, you might have them contact you if you want to join. And if they do, get on the phone, get with them, then email them one on one the information rather than put it out on the web. Let's start with a Pledge of Allegiance. We have two flags here, which is good. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is a delay sometimes when you do multiple audios, yeah. it's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get started with that. I'm excited. We're going to have a great meeting. And I'm going to hand this meeting to Akeen, who is our Toastmaster for the evening. Akeen, take it, man. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, uh, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, tonight, uh, we've got uh, an array of speeches. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am with respect to what people will walk away with after this meeting. The theme for tonight is togetherness. I chose that theme because with uh, COVID-19 and the stay at home order, it is very easy for us to feel alone. It's very easy for us to feel disconnected. It is very easy for us even sometimes to feel lost. Coming together tonight should enable you know that we are together. I like to encourage us to do everything together, have fun, enjoy one another's company, learn from the speeches, have takeaways, and be the better person, the better professional that you aspire to be. Once again, I welcome you all to tonight's meeting. And without further ado, I'm got to, I've got a number of uh, officers here during this meeting tonight. And the next that I'm gonna call upon is the general evaluator, uh, Tiffany, who will uh, introduce uh, our team members and uh, encourage us as always. Over to you, Tiffany. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be general evaluator. It's a little bit even more fun as we do it over Zoom tonight. One thing I'd like to ask for is to be in close touch with your mute button. If you're not speaking, try and mute yourself so that we don't get the feedback that I'm hearing in my microphone right now. And then unmute it real quick so you can clap each time. Since we're all members here tonight, I do want to give everyone a chance to speak and introduce your role. So just please give a brief introduction of your role. And remember, if there's something new and different about it because we're on Zoom, introduce that as well. Our first functionary tonight is our grammarian, Susan Ally. Good evening. As a grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any mistakes or misuses of the English language, as well as any outstanding uses, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. For tonight, for tonight meeting the word of the, uh-oh, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Oops. Uh, All right. So yes, sir. It is resilient, which means I'm going to just read it to you. I made it really beautiful, <laughs> really, really beautiful handouts, but that, uh, never mind. The definition of resilience is the, capa uh, the capability of a strained body to recover its size and shape after deformation caused, especially by compressive stress. And there's also another definition is an ability to recover from or adjust easily to, mis to misfortune or change. Does that make sense? All right. Great. And um, I also want to give an example of using the, the word resilient. Turn today's challenges into tomorrow's triumphs become resilient in all situations. Now, when times are tough and you feel as if you've hit a wall financially um, in your career or, or in relationship or any other area of your life, do you bounce right back and get up off the mat or do you take a nosedive? According to a success expert, Dennis Waitley, it is the trait of resiliency above all others that make you a winner. Resilient people have problems like everyone else, but somehow they always manage to bounce back. Even more than that, they combine bounce back power with brain power. They learn from setbacks and actually rebound with more force and determination than ever. So with that, um, I would like to encourage each speaker to to use the word of the day, resilient. And I will also give the word of the day report and grammatical usage report when called upon during the meeting. Mr. Toastmaster. Bravo, I'll bravo. Back. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Our next functionary is our ah uh, counter. That's gonna be Jorge. Jorge, please introduce your role. Can you mute my mic first? So my role is, um, Basically, I'll be counting any unnecessary intercessions, such as uh, as well, bad, so, and any feeling sounds, not words out like R, O, M, R, things like that. So I'll be paying really attention to any of those sounds. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you. Our next functionary is the timer, and that is Rafia tonight. Rafia? Uh -huh. Okay, so my role is going to be to, uh, to monitor the time. And uh, when, the, when the assigned time has been reached, what I will do, I will show the green, the green part. I hope you all can see. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that to disappear. <laughs> may have to change my background now, I think, yeah. So I will show green. And then one after 30 seconds, then I will show the yellow. And then I will, after 30 seconds again, it will be red. And then we have the grace time, 30 seconds more. And after that, the, the speaker will be disqualified. Right? Thank you, Rafia. We love the color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our ballot counter tonight is Jim. And would you give us your... Oh, she's pointing down. Okay. Please introduce your role. You need to unmute yourself. Hi. I'm unmute now, right? Yes. Excellent. You are unmuted. I am your ballot counter, and as such, I will count the ballots. Uh, I would like for you to uh, direct chat me your, uh, your vote. I'll tally those up, and at the end of the meeting, I'll let you know who the winner is. Is there a certain time when we should send the vote for the best background? You can. I've already received one vote. Uh, as the spirit moves you, uh, fellow Toastmasters, <laughs> send your ballot. Uh, as always, uh, I am usually uh, motivated by cookies, but in this environment, uh, I suppose you'd have to uh, DoorDash me 
if uh, you really want those, uh, that extra bonus vote. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> that concludes the introduction of the team. I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Tiffany, the GE. Right, moving on. We've got our speaker number one tonight. Do we have Ola Adekpoju uh, online? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. You can Excellent. change your view to gallery view. You can see everybody. OK, yeah, that's true. That is very true. Just, just a moment here. OK, yeah, that's right. OK, now. We've got a, a number of cool backgrounds tonight. This is fantastic. All right, without further ado, uh, I will be introducing the speaker number one, uh, Ola Adekpoju. Uh, the title of his speech is Time Never Stops. Uh, Ola is a competent communicator and a certified project management professional. He has been working in the oil and gas industry for over 10 years. Ola is passionate about motivating people and improving his public uh, speaking skills and abilities. Today, Ola will be speaking on a speech titled, Time Never Stops. Give it up for Ola. Thank you, everyone. Nice seeing all the wonderful faces and beautiful background. I want to believe all of you can hear me. Just wave your hand if you can hear me. Awesome, awesome. Today, my speech is Time Never Stops. I was challenged by a friend recently, and the challenge was very simple. He asked me, am I making the most of this shutdown? And that question took me to think, how can you make the most of a shutdown? We can't go to work, we are working from home, the schools are closed, and all the kids are at home, people are in the hospital. How do you make the most of such situation? We hear the alarming news every time. But then a thought was dropped into my heart, and that thought was very simple. Time never stops. My ambition has not stopped. My dreams have not stopped. My goals have not stopped. As long as I am breathing, my life has not stopped. And that is a reality check on what is happening right now. It is easy to focus on the negative news and let time go by. And we'll be wasting a lot of time just going through the motions if we are not intentional. And today, I want to challenge all of us that time never stops. Your dream has not stopped because they asked you to stay at home. The goals you have for 2020 has not stopped. And we need to be intentional about that. Because if you're not intentional about that, it is easy to waste a lot of time at this time. You can binge watch CNN or Fox News or whichever variant you want to watch listening to the same version of the same news from different pundits all day long. Yours can be social media. You can stay on Facebook and post stuff and listen to one conspiracy from one end of the spectrum all the way to the next, analyzing each of them. But how is that helping you to move towards the goals you have for 2020? Time never stops. Today, I want to challenge all of us as I'm challenging myself that staying at home does not mean time has stopped, does not mean our goals have stopped, does not mean that 2020 will not still be a great year for all of us, does not mean we will not still win this year. We need to be intentional about that. So I want to challenge all of us as I'm challenging myself to have at least one goal during this shutdown, a goal of before this shutdown is lifted, I will have invested in myself in this way or that way. I will have invested in my loved one in this way or that way. I will have read that book I want to read. I will have made that call to my uncle that I've not spoken for a long time. I will have made that relationship. Time never stops. 
And this is the time we need to start working on it. And as you make those goals, look at the steps you need to take every day to match and fulfill those goals. Schedule those steps into your day. Do you need to do exercise? Maybe you can still take a walk. When you wake up in the morning, schedule the exercise. Do you need to read a book? Schedule that. Maybe you just want to cook. Schedule that too. Whatever you want to do this time, make sure this time never pass you by. Time never stops. This is an opportunity that we must not waste. This is an opportunity that we need to use to better ourselves. And once we've scheduled that, let us be tracking our progress. Let us track how we are making progress towards the fulfillment of that goal. And if we are not making progress, let us do a course correction. I was told that pilots, when they are flying, they have to do course correction all the time if they don't want to land in a different airport. So all of us also must have accountability partners and times that we check our goals to make sure that we are still on track even though there are many distractions during this time. Time never stops. And most importantly, during this time, I want us to make sure that we are taking care of our health. That is very important. We need to take care of our health physically. We need to take care of our health emotionally. We need to take care of our health spiritually. We need to make sure that we are well aligned to our inner purpose. In terms of physical health, let's make sure we go on exercise. Let's make sure we eat good food. Let's make sure we stay healthy. In terms of mental health, let's turn down some of those news media. They keep feeding us bad news every day. I was looking at the data and I asked myself, more people are being discharged and recovering from COVID-19 that are dying from it. Why is no one talking about people that are recovering? Why are all of them talking about people dying every day? We need to understand that bad news is what that is selling. Fellow Toastmasters, time never stops. Maybe there's a project you're trying to do. This is the time to get on it. Maybe there are things you want to do. This is the time to get on it. Remember, we are going to win on the other side of COVID-19. We'll be here after it's gone. Time never stops. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that powerful speech. Uh, it's now time for the audience to fill out comment form for the speaker. And you've got uh, one minute to do that. So please uh, think about uh, what you will tell Allah regarding his speech. And uh, just reflect on that. I don't know whether we need all the, the entire minute because we are, and you can send, uh, you can send him a direct message via the chat box. Just send it to him directly. Yeah, give it a minute, it's good. Okay, so we'll give you a minute. And Rafia, if you get a chance to turn off your background, the cards could... Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm trying to do because yellow color could not be shown. So I have to go back. I don't know where I have to go back from. Okay, somebody might need to help me. Virtual background, I'm just... Go to your video, your stop on your video. Uh, there is a, there's an arrow on top of it. Uh, beside it, rather, click that arrow. You see, choose virtual background. Once you click okay. choose virtual background, I think you can go to none. There's a none. none. Okay, always show video, preview dialogue, spotlight, make video and speak, mirror my video, uh, enable HD touch. No, I don't see that option. Am I missing something? No. So, um, Next to your video. So, Rafia, when you choose choose virtual background, you'll see your face on the right hand side of the screen, and then look below your face, and you'll see virtual background. The first one on the left should show none. Okay, let me just see. Choose virtual background. Okay. And then you said on the right side. All right. Do you see your face in the camera? Yeah, or I do like see. Okay, and then there's a choose virtual background and it should show all the pictures that you have available from left to right. 
and yeah. one of them has the word none in the center of it. None, okay. Okay, now I think, yeah, I got it none. Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, but I still don't see you. You don't see? I don't see you. No, okay, let me just go back. It shows my Maybe picture. your camera is not on. Maybe you have no background. Oh, okay, you, you know what? I think, yeah, my, my video has... No, there okay. you go. We got yeah. you. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Learning. Good. Watch. All right. Uh, I think we have come to the end of that. Thank you all for providing all the uh, feedback. Now, the next speaker, speaker number two, Anthony Ally. Uh, who is going to be uh, talking about positively surprising good news from 330 executives. Uh, Anthony's survey and personal conversations with 330 executives in the last two weeks resulted in incredibly encouraging positive news. Tonight, he would like to give us a summary of his findings that can enable us to add higher management value to companies and to develop deeper executive connections that will also advance our professional and personal goals in all four dimensions of life. Now, it's time to open your hearts and thoughts by focusing on inspiring positive news from where matters most, by welcoming our friend and our one and only club president, Mr. Anthony Allah. Give it up. Well, thank you very much for having me here tonight. I do have some incredibly surprising positive news. And what I discovered shocked me. When I contacted 330 executives, I was focused on finding out what are their deepest pain points to be able to minister to them, to coach them, to help them to overcome some obstacles they might be having. And as I did, I discovered there was a lot more positive going on than I was expecting. After everything we see in the news and all the economic news from Fox Business to CNBC to Forbes and Inc. 500, anywhere you looked, everything was negative, negative, negative. When I talked to these people, I heard a lot of more positive. Before I start with that part of the meeting, I do want to say I'm not discounting grieving for those who are suffering from the results of this CCP coronavirus. It is very painful for some. If it was a family member of mine, if it was a close friend, I'm sure I would have a darker mood for a while. And that's rightly so. We are to grieve with those who grieve. But we don't want to be stuck in a grieving mode. And we don't want to magnify the grief all around the world so far that we're not able to move forward. Just like Ola beautifully, beautifully, wonderfully shared, we still have our goals. We still have our dreams. We're still breathing. What's the purpose of breathing if we're not fulfilling our call? And with that, I want to have us focus beyond just health to have a four dimensional perspective when it comes to all areas of our life, especially our success. And that four dimensional perspective is spiritual, heart, relationship, and performance. In the spiritual side, as I talk to executives, I notice that many of them are off the hamster wheel and they're not just running around. In fact, many of them have given up commuting, going back and forth, and they're relieved to get several hours back in their day. And amazingly, many of them are humble and more spiritually aware than they have been in a long time. At the same time, helping people to move in their heart and being transformed. I noticed that a lot of people are stuck in anxiety, but this is an opportunity for us to be able to take the trials that come at us and to move to a place of faith and trust to build a character of perseverance or the word of the day, resilience, which lead us to that greater inner strength. This is our opportunity. And some of these executives are there some of them are struggling. I don't know where are you at in this area, whether you're stuck in anxiety or you're able to grow into a transformational peace. Here's the amazing part. Many of the executives I talked to, they were excited. They finally get to spend time 
with their spouse and their children. They almost forgot what they look like. They're so overjoyed. At the same time, there are those who notice that we're having trouble being with their spouse for too long a period of time. I share with them, that's a signal. If you don't tackle it right now, a couple of years down the road, it's gonna come back and bite you, maybe through a divorce paper. Jump into it now, you have an opportunity to heal that relationship and reconnect with your spouse and your children. And a fun mood, I wonder, coming up in December or January, how many of these families will have the surprising blessing of extra children because they got to spend time at this time with their families. And finally, the performance side, results of this survey and these conversations. Here's what I start hearing from a lot of people. Business is so good, I've got a 45 minute wait time for my customer's orders. My business is booming, I'm in a healthcare company, and we're actually challenged by trying to stay HIPAA compliant as we've got people securely working, trying to work in a secure environment remotely. Our business has not changed. We're an IT company. People are already used to working remotely. In fact, I thought you're missing the opportunity to actually grow four times more because you could help others to solve that problem. I'm overwhelmed with so much business as a consultant because a lot of people need change management consulting right now. That's another surprising result. Or in the case of a laid off IT manager said, I landed my highest paying job in a completely new industry after I got laid off from an oil and gas company. I don't know how you think when you think about this, but that's not what I was expecting to hear from people. But what if business is as hot in your environment? What if there are some challenges? Then I ask you to prepare and as project managers, teach your executives, in, implant this in your culture, begin to prepare for the upcoming catapult in the marketplace. A Harvard study of 400 corporations thrived in the last recessions and discovered this, that they were able to do this by focusing on the expected positive outcome. They did not expect to be staying where they're at. CNBC survey confirmed 94% of the people, 91 to 94% of the people are right now expecting to come out of this, and you will come out of it. Plan for the positive outcome to come. There are opportunities for you to reorient yourself right now, to reorient to market realities. There are companies like Cisco said, I lost all my restaurant business, but I can now offer all of my services to groceries, and we have $2 billion in the bank. It's time for supply chain strategy alignment. Maybe we, not, we don't, outsource everything to other countries, especially if there are crucial things that our people need right now. I'm gonna cover a lot more of this in an upcoming presentation on, on the 16th at BPPMI at noon online. If you want information on that, send it to me because I'm gonna cover this in a workshop for about an hour. With that, I'm just imploring you to think of many more opportunities for four-dimensional oriented alignment right now. Thank you very much. Akeen, are you talking? Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know I was muted. I said we've got it. I said thank, thank Anthony for that beautiful speech. So, so sorry you didn't pick that. Yeah. So sorry I didn't know I was muted. Yes. So we appreciate you for that uh, beautiful speech. Uh, very uh, inspirational. And now we've got one minute to provide Anthony a feedback based on his speech. So as we do that, I'm going to ask uh, Tiffany to get ready to introduce the top speaker.
Gotcha. Yep. Right, are we close? Is the minute up? All right, is it the minute? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you want to, me to tell about the speaker number one and speaker number two both? Or no, just, no, I uh, just want to, you to tell us that uh, we've covered uh, one minute of feedback time for Anthony. The feedback, yeah. Um, it's, it's already past one minute, so I think we're good to go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. We're good to go. <laughs> That's all right. No, no problem. No problem. Uh -huh. Okay. All we're right. now on to speaker three. Our third speaker is Akin Oni, and his speech title tonight is "COVID-19 and My Essential Service pa Services Pass." A keen only competent communicator has been with the Toastmasters Club since 2018, 2016, I'm sorry. He earned his competent communicator credential in April of 2018. He's currently working on his dynamic leadership track in the Toastmasters Club Pathways Program. To wrap up level three of the dynamic leadership track in his Pathways journey, Akeem will be speaking tonight on how he negotiated the best outcome in his speech title, COVID-19 and my essential services pass. Please give it up for Akeem. Thank you, Tiffany. COVID-19 and my essential services pass. Just a, a disclaimer right off the bat. I am not a medical doctor. So whatever I say tonight, Please do not take it to mean that uh, I'm talking from the position of professional knowledge. Um, and you will soon realize that uh, this speech is actually not about COVID-19, but it's more about the ability to negotiate and what you need to do that successfully. To many, uh, the occurrence of uh, COVID-19 was a shocking surprise. Despite all the, what I would call the brouhaha around uh, STEM-centric research and development, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Despite all the uh, research work around uh, STEM-related uh, activities, some people are still shocked that uh, we could find ourselves in this, what some people call a quagmire of COVID-19, but to a very few, not a surprise at all. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses, as most of us know, that can cause illness in animals as well as in humans. So it's not peculiar to humans alone. Even some uh, coronaviruses, we understand they commonly circulate in the US here, and usually cause upper respiratory uh, symptoms such as cough, uh, dry throat, runny nose, although some can cause more serious illness. As is widely known now, coronavirus disease 2019, called uh, tagged COVID-19, is a disease that was identified late last year and was declared a pandemic on the, the 11th of March this year. It is novel, that is, it is new to most of us. And there is thus no proven vaccine right now for its cure. We are all at home right now, we know why we are home. While we are home, there are some people out there who are licensed to actually be out there. And I happen to have the privilege of being one of those. Though I don't need a license to go out every day, but I, I have the pass. But how did I get it? So my speech is more about one step 
that I took to negotiate my way into obtaining the essential services pass, which has been automatically reserved for those, as we all know, in health and uh, social services. Currently, my team provides services to support production of natural gas on one hand and the liquefied natural gas on the other hand. Because of that, about a month ago, I was approached to try and confirm the desirability or otherwise of obtaining passes for myself and my team members. And I looked at it before I was contacted, I already overheard that some people were denied. So I saw that as a negotiation opportunity because in my professional life, I do a lot of negotiations, either in the area of contracts, agreements, acquisitions, divestment deals. I do do a lot of that from time to time. And I saw, because I saw that as a negotiation opportunity, I know that based on the lessons that I've learned in the past, to negotiate successfully, you need to be very clear regarding your objectives. You need to make sure you understand the other party's position as well. You need to identify areas where you believe you could come together and agree. And you also need to understand areas of disagreement. And then finally, when you agree, and before the other party goes away, make sure you document your understanding. That way you don't have to revisit that. So what did I have to do? There is one fundamental step that I took that many other colleagues of mine did not take. And the step was making sure that I was able to document reasons why the pass should not be given to me or should not be granted me. And when I was approached, good enough, it was a verbal conversation. They didn't expect me to write anything down. So and I started by telling them, giving them a thousand and one reasons why the pass should not be granted to me. I put myself in their shoes. I, I understood where they are coming from. Explain to them what I thought the reasons would be from their standpoint why the pass should not be granted me. After doing that, I got them excited. And then I explained to them, because of the nature of the services we render, it is actually vitally important that though we may not need the pass every day, it's vitally important that we have the pass now in, so that in the event there's any issue with the major contractor working on our two sides, that we are able to go right there and support them. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, I'm just only here tonight to encourage you. The life in which we live is a life of conflicts, is a life of negotiation. When you find yourself in that situation, think about the other party first and their position. Try to let them understand, the, that, let them know that you understand their position before you present your own views. By doing so, you are positioning yourself for a successful negotiation. Thank you very much. All right, on that note, uh, uh, we, we, we should spend the next minute to provide uh, that speaker uh, <laughs> a feedback. While we're doing that, if you don't mind unmuting yourself at this second and clapping for all three speakers at one time, especially our last speakers, and making sure we're cheering them out. Unmute yourself, otherwise we cannot hear you clapping. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Let me know when we have uh, done that for a minute, Rafia. Unmute yourself, please. You, you have not unmuted yourself, okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can, he does qualify. 
Okay, thank you very much. So now moving on, uh, timer breathing speeches. I think at this point I should be returning to the, this uh, meeting back to uh, Tiffany. Is that is that what I should do, Tiffany? Actually, as the Toastmaster right now, we want to ask if all the speeches qualify and then take a vote. That okay. will send the results to James. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tiffany. So, uh, Madam Timer, mm -hmm. uh, do all the speakers qualify? Yeah, everyone qualifies, and the time is which I have noted. Like for speaker one, for Ola, it was five minutes and 59 seconds. Okay, you can Raphael, yeah. excuse me. Yes, sir. Excuse me. I'm going to ask for your full report at the end of the meeting. If okay, they all okay, qualify, okay. we'll just vote now. Okay. Thank you. So, sure, sure. Yeah, they do qualify. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Rafia. Thanks, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we vote now, please, for the best speaker? And how do you vote? Uh, you vote by sending your the name of your preferred uh, speaker to James Campbell. Yeah. Just uh, use the chat box and yeah. send it to him directly, please. Sorry, what was the name of uh, the ballot counter? James, uh, the, Campbell. James Campbell. James, James Campbell. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, James Campbell. I got it. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to just uh, let us move on. It's 7.13 now, and I'm conscious of the time before Mr. President uh, tells me that I'm, I'm, I'm taking too, <laughs> too long. <laughs> All right, uh, without further ado, I think the next step in this uh, meeting tonight is the table topics. And uh, without further ado, I'm gonna hand uh, this over to Kenda. So give it up for Kenda. Give it up, hello. Hey, Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Mr. Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters, I have recently had the beautiful opportunity to have an interview within my own company for a rotation, and there was a lot of impromptu speaking. So this is a great opportunity for our group here to practice impromptu speaking skills uh, and showing our resilience with those, op those opportunities when they should arise, and uh, just practice those skills. So tonight, keeping with the theme of togetherness, I would like to have a fun exercise where I will present you, uh, those that are volunteering or voluntold, depending on how y'all volunteer, I will present you with an item. It could be a food, it could be whatever, and I would like you to speak upon what you feel would go best together with that, what would pair up nicely with that, and why. You'll have one to two minutes, and our awesome timekeeper will give you the track as far as what you are doing on time. But again, don't be shy. Uh, who, I, let me give you an example real quick. Hot dog might be an example. And that I feel would be great with a resilient bun because it can hold lots of food on top of said hot dog, like a Chicago style hot dog with pickles and mustard because you don't put ketchup on a Chicago style hot dog. Anyway, I would go on with that. So who's my first volunteer? Raise your hand because I know you're out there. I'm going to volunteer somebody. Ah, Jorge, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Would you like to unmute yourself and I'll tell you what your topic is? Let's see what, what goes with what. Thank you, sir. Your topic is coffee. Coffee. My goodness. Well, I was born and raised in Colombia. So as you can imagine, coffee is very strong in my background and in my taste. And honestly, I think that anything goes well with coffee. As a matter of fact, many of the countrymen in my country 
when they get up really early in the morning, in the, up in the mountains, first thing they have before they go out to start their work is to have a strong cup of coffee with a fire water, believe it or not. So that's one of the good things about with coffee, but also when we were growing up and we were little kids, what our mothers gave us in the bottles with the meal was actually coffee. So we raised from, with coffee from a very small age. And um, needless to say, we don't start the day. I don't start the day with a cup of coffee and a toast. That's kind of my breakfast. So everything goes with coffee. During the whole day, when I feel down or I feel happy, when I have the need to have something in my stomach, that's what I have. I have coffee. So I would say that coffee goes great with lunch, with breakfast, with dinner. Nothing better than meet with friends for a cup of coffee in the middle of the day, have a, a nice conversation. And unfortunately, I don't have my cup with me right now, otherwise I will be toasting with you for a cup of coffee. So I would say that coffee goes well with everything. Thank you. Well, cheers to that. I second that. I love my coffee and it goes good with everything. So thank you, Jorge. I appreciate that. Okay. So with that, I'd like to see if we have another volunteer. Please raise your hand. I don't want to be the mom in the group and say, it's going to be you. Because this is a great time to grow. That's why we're here, to grow, right? All right. Three. All right, Susan. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Susan. And your topic or item, I should say, is the moon. The moon. Wait, I thought you said it's the food. It's not always food. I'm going to mix it up. Oh. Improv two. Well, in Chinese culture, we actually have a lot of legend with the moon. And we have like um, <clears throat> these, this Chinese, uh, we call uh, like a, a beautiful Chinese lady who lives in the moon. And every uh, mid-autumn festival, we actually celebrate instead, other than looking at a beautiful, big, gigantic moon and eating moon cake, we would tell stories of this beautiful lady who who actually was a princess of, of the moon and um and and with that we also have like uh lots of different kinds of food uh, different kinds of fruit that goes with it and we also have um wonderful um lanterns that goes with the mid-autumn festival in um we have a uh, uh kids making our own their own lanterns when i was a kid i remember making those lanterns with paper and um, bamboo sticks i mean i don't even remember how to make it anymore but it, it was it was a lot of fun and then we put we put candles in there and then we walk around the park um, i wish that i could you know uh, pass this legend on to my daughter but she doesn't know it so maybe one of these days i have to teach her how to make the lantern and eat the moon cake without the sugar thank you Woohoo! so there was food involved i knew it that's yeah. awesome yeah, that's <laughs> always <food> involved. <laughs> we're gonna bring that food in thank you so much susan you know i was thinking how it could go to like from the pink moon that we had last night or the stars, but I love how you brought it back to your, your familiarity with that, that uh, tradition. And I think it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I would like to open it up to our next contestant uh, who would be excited to grow and learn and just stretch your muscles with us today. And I'm looking at somebody and you can't see who I'm looking at. So if you don't volunteer, I'm gonna choose that person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am looking with my little eye, Doc, Doc Lee. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I was trying to stay incognito. I saw those eyes, sir. Yes, sir. I was on it. My mom eyes were looking at you. If you would be comfortable, I would invite you to join the impromptu practice and speak about a dog. What goes good with the dog? Interesting. Mm. Well, having a poodle would be great. I can see having a poodle. I'm not really a dog person, 
but I can see sitting at a French restaurant in Italy or Spain at a nice cafe restaurant outside having a little tea and maybe a little dash of wine inside my tea and my poodle sitting right next to me and I would give him a little bowl of tea. Of course, it might be spiked. Having some crumpets, <laughs> whatever a crumpet is, have no clue, but it sounded good. And maybe having good company and watching the scenery. I can just see that Spain or Italy would be a great place to watch the scenery and enjoy some crumpets or some tea with a little wine and, and sitting there with your doggy, having a wonderful moment and just enjoying the scenery and life itself. Now, of course, people walking by and complimenting me on my poodle would be wonderful because I'm trying to decide, I think he would be more furry, kind of a dash of brown, maybe a little, maybe squinty eyes and lovable eyebrows and that he would look at people and they would feel real sad and they'd give me money, whichever it may be. I think it'd be a wonderful moment to sit there with your dog and enjoy the time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love that. It associated that with a beautiful location. And yes, I would definitely take my dog, even though he's not a poodle, to France. And I would just, yeah, I would love that. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Toastmaster, do we have time for any more? How much time do we have, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have uh, maybe about two, three minutes. Okay. We can so, so we can more? still take one, one more. Yes. Okay. Who would love to stretch their muscles and take this opportunity for one more? And I will select in 30, not even 10 seconds if nobody volunteers. All right. Going once going twice and i am looking at miss jessica oh <laughs> thank you so much for volunteering jessica i appreciate your just <laughs> resilience and jumping on in <laughs> jessica i would like you to tell us what would uh, go together nicely with roses with roses hmm Okay, <laughs> yeah. So in in Houston, the best roses that can grow so wildly and so nicely is knockout rose. And five years ago, when I first moved to here, I didn't realize that because I used to the the plants, the flowers back in Canada. So it's cold in the winter, and then hot, not too hot in the summer. So I'm used to all those plants. But then I bought all kinds of plants that I was used to and planted it in my garden. And when the summer came, they all very pretty in the spring, but when the summer came, they all died because I didn't know I need to maintain a lot of water with them and keep them uh, water. So then, and then I said, oh, all my flowers gone. What should I do? And then my friends told me, try the knockout roses. Okay. <laughs> so one plant, two plants, three plants, four big plants, like the knockout roses. And they grow so beautifully in my garden. And yeah, so they are really, really good. So yeah, I love to, to do the garden stuff and then I learned when I came here. Um, so it's a good experience. And that's it, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Oh my gosh, yes. I just took some pictures of some knockout roses in the neighborhood and I have to admit, I love them. They're one of my faves. So thank you so much for sharing. So I, I'm going to go continue on here. I believe I'm the one that would say, hey, everybody, this is a time to vote, but we need to find out if they all qualify. So I would ask our timer, do they all qualify? Yes, they all do qualify. Yes. All right. So with that, we had Jorge talk about coffee. Susan spoke about the moon and moon cakes. Doc spoke about dog and Jessica roses. 
So if you would all be so kind to take a moment and share your vote with our ballot counter, James Campbell. And at this point, I believe I should just hand it over to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Is that correct? And please correct me if I'm wrong. Thank That's you so correct. Much. That's correct. Thank you. Great job, Madam Table Topics Master. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Madam Table Topics Master. That was fantastic. Sorry, I was trying to get my vote in before I forget. So, so thank you so much. That was fantastic. Now, without further ado, I'm going to, uh, while, as we vote, I assume that we have all sent in our votes. It should take a few seconds. As you do that, I'm going to turn this back over to the general evaluator, uh, Tiffany Harris, to take it from here. Tiffany, over to you. Thank you, Akeem. We've done the prepared speeches, the impromptu speeches, and now we've come to the most valuable time in the meeting where we get into the evaluation. We have three speech evaluators. Right now, I don't see Avi. I'd He's like back. to call, oh, there he is. He's, He's back hiding now. from us. Look, <laughs> perfect timing. Our first speech evaluator is Avi, and he will be evaluating Ola on his speech tonight. Avi? Hey, hola, how are you? Hola, are you there? Mute? Yeah. All right, hola. He responded, he responded. Go on. <laughs> I'm okay. here. Thank you, Abhi. Good. First of all, congratulations. This was a great opening to a webinar. I'm using the word webinar because this is actually a seminar, but in a web format. I loved it. And believe me, what topic you have chosen today, that is Time Never Stop is actually during the time when we need to hear things that you said. Congratulations on that. And then I will actually proceed with a different kind of evaluation today. Before I go there, time never stops. Very powerful topic, very interesting topic. And right now, as I said, everybody, not only this group of Toastmaster, but anybody out there wants to listen to this. Everybody is going through a little bit of pain. Everybody wants some kind of hope. Your speech showed like a light on the other side of the tunnel. So I really enjoyed it. When I quickly went in and saw the agenda and I saw their speech topic, your expectations were super high and you actually lived up to that. Today's evaluation, I'll try something new. As I said, it will be terrific three T's, three terrific T's. Number one, that is your topic and your presentation. First of all, your setup, your web appearance was crisp. Your background was really minimal. Your topic, I loved it. The sequencing of how you went from one phase to the other phase, having a distinct, you know, uh, let's say a distinction between positivity, negativity. You clearly depicted that using examples of news channel, people talking to each other and all that. I loved it. That's one of the high points I had. Speech was highly motivated. And I, I actually loved it. You know, as I said, right, this is the speech we all wanted to hear. Next is the clarity and the sharpness. You were super sharp, super crisp. We followed across every single word. I'm looking forward to the grammarian. The, you know, we wanted to use the word resiliency. I used now please mark it. But I think, you know, we might want to hear more of that. Maybe you might take a note of that. one. Now, my second T, that is try next time. When you are in a webinar form, everything, everything is in a static way. Only you are moving, maybe your, you know, face. I saw you having this, uh, you know, hand movement and randomly on the same sequence wise. Like, you know, maybe if you want to reduce that one a little bit, it would be a perfect one. Now my third T, that is my takeaway. First of all, you look like those YouTube motivational speakers, you know, who sit back and give that highly motivation speech and they get like million likes. You should try that once, it should be really good. And secondly, your setup, your setup was really good. That's one of my takeaways. 
you had a clean background less distraction the light was right on your face we can hear and see every crisp word from you that was my evaluation ola congratulations this was really good thank you back to to mushma thank you very much avi thank you thank you avi thank you ola excellent excellent our next speech evaluation will be given by jessica and she'll be evaluating anthony Hi Anthony, congratulations for another fantastic speech. Um positive surprising good news from 300 executives. So when I first read the title, I thought, oh, in this environment, where's the good news come from? And then with the first speech talking from uh Ola and now move you to your speech is also very positive and then will give us all this good feedbacks from the executives it's really interesting you are very clear um you have very a lot of uh, vocal varieties and always i look at your slides and also see you on the on the window so i saw you keep eye contact with everybody and you always have gestures with your hand so that's very good and you are very comfortable with your topic and today i'm going to um evaluate the traditional way what you excel at and what you want to work on and how can you challenge yourself so first of all you have a great intro into uh post matters a kin's hand about your ahead of the time so that's give us the background of your your speech and also you have a very nice presentation it's well selected pictures and wording and all those stuff you did a lot of homework beforehand that's great and also you have the great opening talk about during the this time you follow up with this 300 people about their deepest pain points and that caught my attention and then you turn around from the negative all the news that news around us to the positive feedback and you also connected with Ola speech and with everybody in our lives at this period so that's great things you did and you list all the feedback from the 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 people that that give you the feedbacks from and you show them in the slides and you talk about it and you also repeat all the four areas of success in the gopi model and that's really good and then connect those with the feedback so and then you also repeat those at the end so you bring us to refresh your main topic so that's all the good things that you you did and also uh for the things you may want to work on first of all is the slides some of the slides most of the slides is really good but some of the slides is uh has more words so it's too busy so maybe suggest to take out some words and then to challenge yourself and thinking if we can because we heard your series of speech many times uh at least for me i heard quite quite few times so a lot of things is kind of repeating is good but it's also a two edge uh, sword because um that probably will make some people's interest not as high when they first heard about it so my challenge is how can you uh do your speech in a new angle and that's it thank you thank you jessica thank you anthony two excellent speech evaluations we're on to our third speech evaluation which will be delivered by Kalu and he'll be evaluating Akeem Kalu Yes 
is muted. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but uh, Kalu, you are you're muted. Hello? Okay, now it's unmuted. Hello, Aki. Hey, how you doing, man? All right. Thank you, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful and great presentation. As always, this is another great speech from you. I love it. It couldn't have been in a better time than uh, this time. Um, one of the things uh, I want to evaluate you on is uh, based on uh, the outline given. One is uh, to evaluate you based on what you excelled at, and then also to look at what you may want to work on and the area you want to challenge yourself on. When I want to look at what you excelled on, from your speech, I can see that you were prepared well in advance for this. How do I know? You talked about being able to go through the point of what to negotiate with the people that were to give you the pass. Another thing I could say that was an excellent point and something that is admirable is the fact that you made yourself vulnerable. You were able to put yourself in their shoe and you didn't look desperate because in a time like this, sometimes people look desperate and that makes a whole lot of difficulties in the other person understanding why you actually need it. So you made yourself vulnerable and I think that's a good one in uh, also negotiation. And I also looked at it from the angle that you, you, you are also passionate about this topic. You were not just delivering a speech, you were delivering a speech you are connected with and you also want to drive or to sell the message to the audience. And I believe there's also that connection for every one of us here. Because in one time or the other, we have found ourselves in a point of negotiating one thing or the other. Are there things that uh, you may need to consider in a way of working on so that as you have been doing great speeches, it will be maybe a better speech next time? Uh, I, when I look at uh, things like negotiation and what you were talking about, I would have wanted to see some vocal variety to probably put us in the scene of where you were doing this conversation or negotiation with them, but I didn't see that. And I also would have wanted to see kind of gesture that would have been able to put us in the point of two people are negotiating something. This is the way this person is reacting because I believe it's not a straight line thing. Even if you made yourself vulnerable, they will see be an area they will want to look at. Do you really, is this really correct on that? So you might need to look at that. Then is there anything you need to challenge yourself on? Making yourself vulnerable in a negotiation could also be counterproductive. The only thing is knowing your, the party you're negotiating with. So it's something you need to take away from being able to understand who you're negotiating with because there are people who want a zero sum. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you very much, Kalu. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kalu and Akeem. Now that we have completed the speech evaluations, Rafia, did all three evaluators qualify in their time? Uh, yeah, Jessica is the only one who, who was kind of a little bit over with the time. The rest of them were fine. Okay, so then we should vote. We should send our votes for either Avi or Ukpai, and we should send them to James. That's correct. Give us one minute, Rafia, and then we'll close the voting.
Any voters remaining? Keep those votes coming. I have not had Ruth's voice today. Ruth, we have to give you something to say before we finish the meeting. <laughs> I know. She did well. She did make an announcement at the beginning of the meeting, so that was all she needed to say today. <laughs> She's tired now. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually thought that Kendra was going to call on her to speak instead of Doc Lee. But I'm glad she called her on Doc Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that too. Thank you, Kendall. I am a little bit tired. <laughs> I'm going to assume that everyone has gotten their vote in and I want to thank you all for the resilience that you've shown in going through our Zoom Toastmasters meeting tonight. Now we'll call on the rest of the evaluation team and just see how well we did overall as a group. Are we ready? Our first report will come from Susan Ally, the Grammarian Report. How did we do, Susan? We did great tonight. Um, I have Anthony and uh, Kindle and um, Abby and Tiffany who used the word of the day. Wahoo! <laughs> very good, thank you. I also have some very vivid sentences to share with you. For Anthony, he said, build a character of, of uh, perseverance. Wonderful phrase. I think I'm going to remember that. And growth into transformational peace. Wow. We have to put that on a plaque or something. It's, it's very vital, at, especially in this time. Akin, he also made a very vivid sentence. The life that we're living is a life of conflict and negotiation. Beautifully put. I love it. Ola, you have, as long as I'm breathing, my life has not stopped. I love that. Time never stops. And we are going to win on the other side of COVID-19. Yes, we are. Thank you for reminding us. Kendall, you also have said, a, have a beautiful opportunity. I love the word beautiful instead of just, I have an opportunity. I have a beautiful opportunity. <laughs> Loved, loved the way that you um, embellished your sentence. And Jorge, anything goes well with coffee. I totally agree. Let's see. And Abby, you said, show light at the other side of the tunnel. Wonderful. I literally see the light on the other side of the tunnel where you, um, you were evaluating um, Ola, and that was, that's true. I have the same feeling too, that it, he shows a light on the other side of the tunnel. Jessica, I love the way you said, do your speech in a new angle, Mr. President. <laughs> and Opai, you said, you made yourself vulnerable. And that is true and passionate about your speech. Thank you so much. These are all the vivid sentences that all of you did tonight. Thank you, Susan. Clap, clap, clap. Our next report will come from Jorge. This will be the eye counters report. Jorge? I think everybody did very well on the forbidden words tonight. I had a hard time counting them. I only found all I used only any of the forbidden words three times. Uh, Akin used only one time. Uh, Susan, I count three on her. And during the evaluations, I count one on Jessica, and then just, I mean, on the improv on Jessica once, and uh, during the evaluation one. So I think everybody did very well, very few times that the forbidden words were used today, tonight. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Clint. Now we're on to the timers report. Rafi, you can finally tell us the times that everyone's oh, okay. been on there. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the time. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, the details I will tell you about speaker number one for Ola. He qualifies uh, by um, consuming five minutes and 59 seconds. And speaker number two, Anthony Ali, he qualifies uh, consuming six minutes and 59 seconds. And speaker number three, Akin, 
uh, he qualifies with six minutes and 17 seconds. And let's go to table topic um, speakers. Jorge, he qualifies with one minute and 29 seconds. Suzanne qualifies with one minute and 39 seconds. Doc Lee with one minute, 25 seconds. Jessica, one minute and 30 seconds. Now let's get on to speech evaluators. Uh, speech evaluator number one was Avi. Uh, he qualifies three minutes and 20 seconds. And speech evaluator number two is Jessica. Uh, she, she used for four minutes and the speech evaluator number three was Okpai and he used three minutes and 16 seconds. Thank you. Now the last evaluation of the evening will be mine as the general evaluator. The most important thing, all roles were filled. We did have one evaluator spot, but Avi stepped in without any coaxing. He just said, yes, I'll do it. Makes it very easy for the meeting to flow when all the spots are filled. We started on time on our Zoom platform. Thank you, Anthony, for that. The theme, togetherness, it was excellent. It was appropriate for this time. It was well thought out. And somehow it bled into the speeches. The positive theme, I, I guess you cast a, a thought and people carried on with it. In the times that we're in, we need encouragement. And that came out in all of the speeches. Useful information and good quality, well thought out speeches. Some things we should try to do is mute when we're not speaking, but unmute to show appreciation. So we really have to be in touch with our buttons during this time. Also, we had fun with the Zoom background and the gallery view. So we'll learn to adapt to this. And I'm saying so too many times. I'm glad we're not counting now. I love the adaptation on the timer. That was good, showing the different colors, but also typing it into the chat panel. That was useful. And we'll learn as we go along how best to adapt. And James was great with the voting and reminding us who we're voting for and where to send it. The evaluation format vary. So we keep it fresh and exciting each time a new evaluator comes. And let's see, oh, the speaking. One thing that threw me off just a little bit was when, Kalu, when you were giving the evaluation and we just saw your name. It's a little awkward at a Toastmasters meeting to speak to the panel with your name on it or to listen to it, but we heard you and it was done well. This was another excellent opportunity by the club to have a meeting via Zoom and let's keep it going during this time of um, confinement. <laughs> it keeps us up and it keeps us motivated to keep going with Toastmasters. So I appreciate it. I was glad to be your general evaluator. And now I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster for voting and let's see who won. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Before we vote, uh, each, each meeting that I've been in that uh, Tiffany was the uh, general evaluator is uh, somehow, I'm always very excited for a variety of reasons because she has this natural ability to bring things together into one meaning for all. I just, I don't want to forget that. So I really appreciate that in you, Tiffany. Please, whatever I say that's driving you to act the way you do, that's a good thing, keep doing that. I really appreciate it, I must say Thank that. You. Okay, Thanks. so now on to voting. Uh, we've got uh, Ola Adepoju as a uh, speech, uh, I mean, who delivers speech number one. And then Anthony Ally delivers speech number two, and then myself number three. So we're now in the voting uh, phase. Mr. Uh, James Campbell, I think I'm going to ask you right now. Thank you. So who won? Who was the best uh, speaker? Did we get a drum roll? Did we get a drum roll? Can we update and get a drum roll? <laughs> OK, let's go. They should have your drum. There we go. There's, There's your drum roll. Okay, yeah, that's right. 
the best speaker and our newest YouTube influencer, Ola. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you. All right. And uh, do we get a vote now for the uh, Table Topics Master? Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay. Let's do the drum roll again for the best Table Topic Master. Woo! Best Table Topics with his coffee fueled reply, Jorge. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. I okay. What about uh, the evaluator? Yes. Who is our best evaluator for the evening? <laughs> the best evaluator from his lair, Avi. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. And uh, your bonus vote, uh, Avi. Your evil lair puts you at that James <laughs> Bond level uh, optic. You have right, won the best background. Excellent. The next excellent. time I'll take a roll of a timer, I can change the lights to red, yellow, and you know, green. <laughs> be awesome. Yes, do yeah. that. It's All not right. an evil lair, it's a disco club. I understand better. Okay, that's wow. actually. Is that actually a background or is that your actual house? It's legit. That's my house. That's my oh, house. Oh, wow. Right? It's a bar. It's a bar. There. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, thank you, you so much, everyone. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we've got about uh, eight minutes before the hour of eight. So, and I'd like to finish this meeting in good time. Uh, so, thank you all so very much. It's been amazing. Uh, facilitating this meeting tonight as your Toastmaster. Uh, starting with uh, Ola and uh, his speech, I really appreciate, and I'm not going to try to repeat what uh, Tiffany already uh, said very nicely, uh, investment in self. That, uh, that kind of uh, touched me. And uh, the fact that pilots, they cause correct, I, I, I can relate to that, even though I'm not a pilot, but I, I understand very clearly, even as human beings, we need to pick some of these phrases and apply it into our lives. Even in life, in careers, education, whatever is it that you do, there are times when you sit back as an adult and you look at how you could cost correct. So we all do that. And of course, Anthony, uh, anything positive in the current dispensation is a good thing. Even just that word right now, we all need it. So thank you so much for bringing light into the dark world that we live in right now. Uh, I would say you are one light that brightens within the Toastmasters Club. Thank you so very much. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, table topics, I, first I'd like to appreciate everyone for using uh, the meeting theme, which is togetherness. And I appreciate people's appreciation of uh, that word because uh, I did not just choose that word. That word, I mean, it means a lot to me, particularly in this time that we're in, in this present age right now, because uh, there are so many people out there that don't feel that they have anyone around them. And the only group of people that they've got is just if they take care and they have to go to the hospital and then they can call 911 or call maybe uh, Uber or whatever to take them there. So but we've got the privilege of having ourselves. And I just want us to continue in that spirit of togetherness and let's show resilience because in this time uh, that we're in, if we don't show resilience, it can be very challenging. This time shall pass. We all must remember that this time shall pass. And I'm gonna go back to all our uh, speech. When this time is over and you look back, what are going to, what will be your ad nouns and what will be your victories? It's very important that we think through on that right now. What have you been ad aspiring to accomplish that this stay at home actually provide the opportunity to push forward or to fast track? I'd like you to think about that right now and actually push yourself a little bit. Uh, for the table topics, thanks for Madam Table Topics Master. Uh, Master. 
and uh, to uh, Ohe, Susan, Dockley, and Jessica. I'm not going to repeat what Tiffany already said. You all did fantastic. And thank you so much for making my job as your Toastmaster effortless tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the meeting now back to Mr. President. Let's give it up for Anthony as he speaks. Thank you very much. Awesome job, Mr. Toastmaster and everyone in the club tonight. Thank you. You kept the energy going. You offered incredible value. I hope everyone that has come has felt more positive, has felt hope renewed, especially when all we get out there from a lot of people and a lot of sources is negative criticism, real stats of people dying and sick. And I mean, it just looks like, oh, the world's coming to an end. Are we ever going to get out? And yet we come here and we feel, wow, this is just a temporary setback. Many of us will make it to the other side. Based on real stats, about 99% of us are going to continue to live. 99% are going to continue to live. More than likely, in the Texas area, by the way, just to let you know, the death rate is only 11 out of a million. 11 out of 1 million. Your chance of dying are very low in Texas. Sadly, in other parts of the nation, they're 500 out of a million. Major difference between New York, New Jersey, and Texas. In prayers for them and for those who are suffering, but thankful that we are in a place that is fairly safe compared to a lot of parts of the world. We're not quite as great as Taiwan. Taiwan has an unbelievably low, I think they've had only like seven people die out of 24 million people. I mean, it's really, <laughs> and they were right there at the beginning. They got influx, but they were right on top of everything. The incredible model. I hope we can learn from them how to handle this kind of stuff in the future. They happen to have a lot of experience with the country that this originated from, and they knew immediately to not trust anything. And, and the world maybe has learned a little bit, unfortunately, I hope that we can learn and we really, I'm in prayer for a lot of people that are suffering under various governments and various structures and keep encouraging one another to focus on how do we go forward? With every breath that we have, we want to make the most of it. With that, I would like to turn the table over to one person, Doc Lee. Would you please share your thoughts on tonight's meeting as a guest in our club? And tell us what drew you here tonight. Uh, it's just been a while since I've been to your meeting, so I just wanted to pop in. You did good. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any feedback on what you thought went well in an online meeting? No, I think Tiffany summed it up really well. Really well. Very good. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for being here. I'm glad you joined us and participated as a table topics person. Thank you very much. With that, there's one note. We want to make sure that Toastmasters is paid. We're all a volunteer organization. If you are a member of the club, please make sure that you're sending your card information to Jessica or arranging to mail her a check or however, you know, preferably not meet with her to give her cash. This is not the right time to do that. <laughs> if you can, get a card or check would be great. Make sure she's taken care of. I'm not even sure how we're doing on that front, but please make sure that's taken care of. Toastmasters gave us grace period till the end of the month, end of April, because of what we're going through. Many of us are ready to care of this, but please follow up on that. For our next meeting, who is going to be our Toastmaster for the next meeting? Raise your hand if you're going to be a Toastmaster for the next meeting. Mm. Our team took on the role this time, which I'm happy. <laughs> All right, Ola is going to take on Toastmaster. Excellent, excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. And who will be our general evaluator? Our general evaluator. Kendall, did I see your hand go up? Yes. <laughs> Some person behind me here in San Francisco, they're just <laughs> jumping around, you know. They're waving back there. <laughs> Would you like I'll, to see I'll try it. Why not? Awesome. Awesome. Do it. Okay. awesome. Thank you very much. 
other people are where who's going to bring our refreshments next time oh we don't need to do that <laughs> no i will i will volunteer I, I will volunteer to not just bring the refreshment but also be your table topics master oh table topics master what yes wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, those are going to be our major three roles that are the three leaders for the three sections, the pie format, the, pre the prepared speeches, the whole meeting in Toastmasters, and our impromptu speaking and our evaluations. With that, each of you will take on and please make sure you sign up online. You can go while we're having a meeting going, make sure you've got a role, get your speaker role, get a leadership role right away as soon as you can and invite, I'm going to encourage you, invite guests, co-workers, your executives. This is their, your chance to invite them to experience Toastmasters in an online format. You'll be shocked how many people need to get promoted. They need to go apply for a job and they have to be online in this format and they have no clue how badly they come across. I've seen too many people that are great in person and they get on the video Either their audio is horrible, their video is messed up, their background is messed up, they can't get their messaging across, they can't see themselves. Sometimes you'll see them something like this and they're talking to people or you see them talking like this. And you want to come on back up and pay it and they have no idea what they're doing or they will not dress up for an interview. They're still wearing kind of a homey t-shirt. I'm like, what are you thinking? You are in a business environment, be professional just because you're at home doesn't mean you should not have professionalism. There's so much we can learn from this experience. I'm so excited that we're turning around something that's a time of suffering to something great, that we're having a great silver lining, a time of learning and encouraging one another. I thank you for everyone that participated. I'm looking forward to our next meeting, which will be in two weeks from now. Eight and 14 is the 22nd. And don't forget on the 16th, I'll be speaking to the P BP PMI at noontime and will be an online format, but they're limiting it to 75 people. If you want to join, please make sure that you're coming, that you let me know and I will send you the information. Thank you very much. Continue to reach out to each other, encourage one another, pray for each other, continue to give this great positive focus like we heard tonight from Ola and Akin and everyone in this room. With that, thank you for the meeting. We are officially over. Feel free to hang out and chat with each other if you want. If not, let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Shout out thank to you Ruth. very much. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Yeah, thank bye. you very much. Bye. Bye. Have a nice bye. week. Have a nice week. Uh, bye, y'all.